Hi Cretans, today we're going to do some analytical geometry. So let's read the question together. It says the diagram shows the graphs of g of x is equals to ax squared plus q, that's the general form, f of x is equals to mx plus c, that's a straight line graph. R and S are the intercepts of G and T is the y-intercept of G. Very critical information. Graph of F passes through R and T, so those are the roots. Not the roots, but the intercepts of F. So let's go to the first question. It says, well, this is a very important question, and let's pay special attention. The question is as follows. It says, we must find the range. So what is the range, guys? The range is all the y values for which, in this case, g of x is defined. So let's look at all the y values for which this g of x exists. And by inspection, we can see it's all values from negative infinity to 8, positive 8. That's the turning point. It doesn't go any further than that. For example, if you think of positive 9, then this graph is not defined. So basically, you can write y should be less than or equals to 8. But anything more than 8 the graph is undefined like for instance 9 um, the graph doesn't exist so it's all the y values for which g of x is defined right so 5.1 was pretty straightforward let's go to 5.2 Write down the x-coordinate of r. So that's a root. But by inspection, we can see that the distance from 0, the origin, to s and the distance from 0, or o to r, is exactly the same. So therefore, minus 2 and 0 are the coordinates of r. Because quite clearly this region right over here shaded in blue is a mirror image let me just change the gradient that region in blue is a mirror image of that they are mirror, they are the two regions are mirror images of each other and therefore the distances between those roots should be the same. So R's coordinates are minus 2 and 0. Very easy. So that one is done. Let's look at number 5.3. 5.3, calculate the values of A and Q. Oh, so in the general form, Y is equals to or g of x is equals to g of x is equals to a x squared plus q. Um, it's quite clear that the constants q is the y-intercept, and we are given the y-intercept that is given to us already. So the y-intercept in this case q is 8 All right 8 but it's possible to find a um, what we can do is we can substitute um, a coordinate coordinates for s we have the x coordinate we have the y coordinate and we have q so it's possible to find a so the output when the output is to the input is 0 and the y-intercept is 8 so therefore it becomes quite easy to find the a wait I think I made a mistake here when the output is I think 
when the output is zero yeah i think i should change the two and make it a zero yeah that's supposed to be when the output is when the output is zero the input is two yeah that's correct so i think it's just a matter of plugging and playing substituting the output the input and the y intercept and making a the subject of the formula so zero is equals to a two squared plus eight negative eight to the other side it becomes negative eight if you take it over four two squared is four over eight divide both sides by four those two cancel out negative eight divided by four is negative two so a should be negative two so that was a very easy question so 5.3 a should be negative 2 oh sorry for that let me just erase this okay so a is negative 2 and q is positive 8 there we go so 5.3 was so easy right so let's look at 5.4 determine the equation of f and f is a linear equation it's a straight line so the general form of f of the equation is f of x is equals to mx plus c so to find the gradient m we need two points and Fortunately, we do have the two points, and those two points happen to be the intercepts. So we can find the gradient, and we also have the y-intercept, so that's quite easy. C is the y-intercept. Always, always remember in the general form, f of x is equal to mx plus c, c is always the y-intercept. So now let's find the gradient. The gradient is always change in y m is equals to what am i writing m is equals to change in y over change in x which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 it's the gradient formula guys just take note um, and be very cautious in the general form mx plus c y is equals to mx plus c c the constant is always the y-intercept and m is the gradient so we are given the coordinates y2 is 8 y1 is 0 and minus or minus 2 the x coordinate x1 is minus 2 so 8 divided by positive 2 because negative and negative is positive the answer should be 4 right so therefore f of x is equals to 4x plus 8 and that seems to be right because the gradient is positive right if you look at the graph the gradient is positive so 5.4 very straightforward now let's have a look at 5.5 this let's find values for which f of x and g of x are equal where they intersect in other words where the two functions intersect where they cross each other so i'm going to use blue there's a point there that's where they intersect and the second point is by r so t and r is where the uh, two functions intersect so x should be zero and x should be minus two those are your answers right therefore x should be equals to zero or x should be equals to negative two okay that was very straightforward now let's look at 5.5.2 the product when you multiply all the x values of gx by the function gx you should get 
negative values or zero. Remember all the x values of gx and gx. So the recommendation would be g of x should be positive, all positive g of x and all negative x. Because if you multiply a positive with a negative, you should get a negative. So you're looking at this region, g of x is positive in this region. g of x is positive in this region, right? And at the same time, x is negative in that region. And that's what we want. That's the recipe. Because if you multiply x by g of x in that region, all values will be negative. And that includes 0. Because if x is 0, then automatically the whole expression becomes 0. So the solution is x should be greater than, strictly greater than 2, negative 2, and strictly less than or equals to 0. But then there's a second region. Let me just draw a line here to try and show you guys. We're looking at the region where g of x is greater than positive 2 and at the same time i mean g of x is um greater than we're looking at, the, at that region where g of x is negative and at the same time x is positive where x is greater than 2 because if you multiply um, g of x by x in that region all values will be greater than or equals to zero that includes two right that includes two right so it means that um, it means that let me see yeah x should be greater than two greater than or equals to two and g of x should also be greater in that green region Right. So those are your values. X should be greater than. So that is. That would mean that. X should be greater than. Negative two. Or less than or equals to zero. So X should be greater than or equals to positive two. Right. So that one was quite straightforward. So let's have a look at the last question, 5.6. Okay. So the question is, the graph H is obtained when G is reflected along the line Y is equals to zero. Write on the equation of H in the form of H of X is equals to PX squared plus K. But you know when they say Y is equal to zero, they actually refer to the X axis y is equals to zero in other words is the x-axis so in other words we're looking for all g of negative g of x values because h of x is a mirror reflection of g of x in a simple analogy let me let me let me explain to you guys in, in this fashion. Consider a, a point. Consider a point with the following coordinates. Um, let's think. Let me just draw a Cartesian plane here. I think, yeah. So here is a point. Imagine that's the x-axis, right? That's the y is equals to zero, or the x-axis. Consider a point with the following coordinates 2 and 0. And then if you reflect it about the x-axis, um, the mirror image would be minus 2 and 0. And that would be A and that would be A prime. So in the very same way, H of X is defined by all the negative values of G of X. So you just substitute G of X. Right? And g of x in this case would be negative 2x squared 
plus 8. So negative and negative is positive. 2x squared minus 8. So that's very straightforward.